all business combinations are required to be accounted for using the acquisition method. The acquisition method consists of four steps. Here we focus on the fourth step, which is the calculation and recognition of goodwill or bargain purchase. IFRS 3 paragraph 32 sets out the formula for the calculation of goodwill, which is purchase consideration plus the fair value of previously held equity interest in the acquiree plus the amount of non-controlling interest minus the fair value of the identifiable net assets of the acquiree. IFRS 3 paragraph 19 allows a choice for the measurement of non-controlling interest. That is the full goodwill method or the partial goodwill method. If the entity chooses the full goodwill method, then it would measure the non-controlling interest using the fair value of shares held by the non-controlling interest shareholders. For example, Alpha Limited is a major player in the shoe manufacturing industry. On 31st December, Alpha acquired 90% share interest in Beta Limited for $250,000. Beta is a major competitor in the shoe industry. This acquisition gives Alpha Limited control over Beta Limited. Beta Limited's net identifiable assets had a fair value of $300,000 on the acquisition date. And the fair value of the non-controlling interest was $60,000. What is the value of goodwill if Alpha adopts the full goodwill method? We would need to substitute the amounts into the goodwill formula. Consideration is $250,000. Alpha Limited did not own any previous equity interest in Beta Limited, so this is zero. As Alpha Limited uses the full goodwill method, the amount of NCI will equal the fair value of shares held by the non-controlling interest shareholders, which is $60,000. The fair value of the identifiable net assets is equal to $300,000. Therefore, goodwill will be $10,000. If an entity chooses the partial goodwill method, then it would measure non-controlling interest as the NCI percentage of the identifiable net assets. If Alpha Limited adopted the partial goodwill method, what would goodwill be? The values for all other variables would be the same, but NCI in this case would be $30,000, which is calculated as $300,000 of identifiable net assets times 10% which is the proportion attributable to the non-controlling interest shareholders. Therefore, the final outcome is negative $20,000. This negative amount is not referred to as goodwill, but rather as a bargain purchase or negative goodwill. IFRS 3 paragraph 36 requires that when there is a bargain purchase option, the acquirer is to reassess if all identifiable assets and assumed liabilities have been accounted for. In other words, the acquirer must re-evaluate whether step 3 of the acquisition method was correctly done. If there is still a bargain purchase after reassessing step 3, then the amount shall be recognized directly in profit and loss on the acquisition date. Goodwill is recognized as an asset at acquisition date. So now we need to consider how goodwill is measured in subsequent years after initial recognition. IFRS 3 paragraph B63A requires it to be measured as the amount initially recognized minus accumulated impairment losses. There are two important rules relating to subsequent measurement of goodwill. The first is that no amortization is permitted for goodwill. And the second is that goodwill must be tested annually for impairment in terms of IES 36. To recap, Goodwill calculation can differ depending on whether the full goodwill method or partial goodwill method is used. Further, there are rules relating to subsequent measurement of goodwill in terms of IFRS 3 and IS 36.